What's going on everybody, it's Delmar and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I'm happy to introduce you to Agora who provides real-time engagement communication. This means that we can do real-time video, we can do real-time audio, we can also do messaging and so on. In today's use case, I'm gonna use Agora to basically do a very simple video chat in Unity. I'm gonna walk you through how to set it up in the Agora portal. What do we need to do to download the SDK? How do we interact with it in Unity? and basically give you a demo that is going to be the starting point of creating an extra rig that is going to allow us to not only display the video on a canvas, but also display a video right over our head when we're using an extra rig. So let's jump into Unity and I start working on it. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're going to be integrating Agora into Unity. So I'm using the Agora SDK and if you go into the Unity Asset Store, you're gonna be able to download it and by searching for Agora, there's going to be two different assets that you can download. If you want to implement video chat, which is what I'm gonna do in this video, you can download the Agora Video SDK, but if you just wanna do voice, which is a stripped down version of the Video SDK, you can do that as well. So you can click on it, download it, and then once you download it, you're gonna have something like what I have right now, which is an Agora Engine folder. Once you get it downloaded, the other thing that I also want you to do is if you go into the agora.io so i'm currently in the console because i'm already logged in and create a new project this is going to ask you for the project name and also what use case you're building and there's two different ways that you can do the authentication you can do an app id plus a token which is obviously recommended for better security or you can do a test mode app id which you can use for testing i actually did this one and i generated a temporary token so i recommend that you do that once you do that and create a project, it's going to give you something like what I have right now. One project is called Dilmer XR VR. And if you have multiple projects, you can, you know, structure them here and organize them. So the other thing that you can do is you can also create a temporary token. And that's what I did. And this is going to be very critical information that you need. You're going to need an app ID. You're going to need a channel name. And then also you can generate a temp token. So once you have that, then you're gonna be landing you know, in your project. You're gonna have everything that you need in here. The, the things that I'm going to be implementing today is going to be two different scripts. One of them is going to be very coupled to the Agora SDK. And then the other one is going to be more to you know drawing on the canvas, basically interacting with UI. There's gonna be two different scripts that are going to be very beneficial when you integrate Agora into your system. So. The first one that I'm gonna do is I'm going to focus on the Agora Unity video. And just so you know, currently I have two different, pro two different scripts in here that I'm going to be integrating. There's already game objects that I already created, but they don't have any implementation. So if I go and look at Agora Unity video, it's a basically an empty mono behavior and also an Agora video setup, which is another empty mono behavior, which is using my singleton implementation, which you can download by going into the repo that I'm gonna be putting in the description. Okay, and then basically it's just gonna be this Agora video interacting with the Agora Unity video, which is the one that is closer to the Agora SDK. So once you have that, there's also right now, what I have in here is just a very basic canvas. And this canvas is going to allow me to basically grab the video that I get from Agora and then place it in, in the canvas. So, the way that it's gonna work is I have a videos placeholder in here. It's basically a panel with a horizontal layout group. And if I were to do this, just as an example, let's say that I wanted to create a raw image. And the images that I'm gonna be creating are going to be 60 by 50, just so that I can fit in perfectly in the GUI right here. And you can see that as soon as I do that, they're going to be aligning in there. So let's say that you have multiple videos because we may have multiple people joining our session. So there's going to be video images that get added and then if people drop from the video, basically they're gonna be, you know, they're gonna be removed because we're gonna be implementing that in the actual implementation. So enough of that, let's go ahead and get going. I'm going to go into the Agora Unity video. And the way that I'm gonna do this is I'm going to be implementing everything and then we're going to be going through the code and I'm gonna explain it to you. All right guys, so that's everything that we needed to do for coding on the Agora Unity video. Just to give you an overview, the first thing that we do here is we get the iRTC engine. This is basically the wrapper 
to the Agora SDK. It has all the different methods that we're going to be able to, you know, to connect to and then callbacks and things like that for the video stream. The token that I have right now, this is more of a temporary thing. Normally they recommend that you have a token, you know, kind of like an authentication system that generates a token. And I'm also going to be putting the, basically what they recommend that you do when you're implementing Agora. This is to determine what the last error is so that we don't keep, you know, displaying the same error over and over and over. And also the local user ID so that I can store which user ID is the one that we are creating a video for. And this is gonna be very helpful when we implement the XRA with the video overlay that I'm gonna be doing on the next video. So the first thing is super easy. This is gonna be, okay, we're, we need to load the engine, right? We need to be able to load Agora. We're gonna store our token here as an instance variable. We wanna make sure that, you know, the engine doesn't already exist because it already exists. There's no reason for us to do this again. And then we're gonna just call into the get engine and then by app ID, it's gonna give it an instance. And then during development, I think it's important that we do debug and also warnings and, you know, and this can be changed based on the, the environment. It just basically gives you more logging depending on what filter you passed in. And then if you need to join a session, meaning that we wanna just start getting or video, you know, a stream. Then the first thing that we're gonna do is, are we, you know, is the engine null? If it's null, we don't wanna do anything because we haven't really initialized it. And these are gonna be all the callbacks that we need to basically tie to. On join channel success, is gonna be as if we join the channel successfully, this callback is going to, basically is going to be executed. If another user is join our session, this is the one that is going to get executed. If the other user is going offline, this is gonna be executed. And this is gonna be important because we need to basically listen to, okay, are other users joining? Are other users joining? If they're joining, then we wanna make sure that we create the appropriate raw image. And then that raw image is the one that is going to render the video. The same thing when they go offline, if we, if we wanna, we wanna make sure that we know when they go offline so that we can remove the raw image. And then these are just gonna be any warnings that the, the actual engine might throw. We can also handle errors in here. And I also, I'm gonna show you the implementation of that. And then the next thing that we'll do is we're just gonna enable video. We're gonna enable video servers. And this is really important because we're gonna be joining the channel by a key. And this one is gonna help you, you know, leave a channel. So if we are connected to a current channel, then we can call the leave channel method, disable all the observers, and make sure that we're destroying the current raw image for the user, which in this case is going to be me. And then this one is important because if we're quitting the application, we wanna make sure we don't leave any garbage. So we're basically calling the RTC engine destroy and also setting the instance to null. Enable video is gonna be important when we're basically passing the video. Let's say that we close out of the app. Well, we don't, we temporarily, you know, stop the session, the active session on the app, and then we get back to it. We wanna make sure that we pause the video. We don't keep streaming because that's gonna save us, you know, it's gonna, it's gonna save us money long term. So we're basically saying if we're not passing, we're gonna be enabling the video. If we're passing, we're gonna be disabling the video. So it allows you to toggle between those two. And then this is gonna be us if we're joining and things were successful. I'm gonna be passing in, well, this is passed by the callback, the channel name, the user ID, elapsed time. So the local, the local user ID, I'm gonna be storing it based on the user ID that I got from the callback. And this is just some login information that's gonna get us the SDK version. This method, I'm gonna show you what it does, but it basically gives me a location where I'm gonna be putting the video, which it contains a raw image. And then I'm also going to be making an image video surface, which is what's going to be rendering the video for Agora. The other things that are also important if we're basically doing a multiplayer video stream, we wanna make sure that we capture the on user join. So if another user join, we wanna get also a child video location. We also wanna make a video surface so that we can place their video feed on the canvas. And I also wanna make sure that I am setting, you know, who is that video surface for? Well, it's gonna be for the user that I got on the callback. I'm also going to be enabling the video surface and I'm also going to determine what kind of video surface it is, which is going to be in this case, a raw image. When I actually, well, when the user goes offline, we also need to handle that. I wanna make sure that we are also destroying the raw image that we created for that user. So that's what I'm doing here. If a callback returns, you know, the user ID, I'm going, to, I'm going to look for that user ID, basically game object, and I'm going to destroy it. And then I also handle errors in here, pretty simple stuff. 
the game the game object give child video location is pretty simple it's going to give us the location of the video game object and then i'm going to determine do i already have the child video which basically is going to look it up by by user id getting the game object if it's no i'm going to create a new one and i'm going to attach it to the video basically the pairing is going to be the videos object i'm going to return the video location and that's how i basically get okay this is going to be where we're going to be putting the the video either is a video of myself the one that is joining or if another user is coming in and joining a session as well when i say joining a session i'm talking about multiple videos showing in the canvas one for your webcam and one for the other person's webcam so this this method is really important as well this is how i'm making a video surface the video surface think of it as the basically the wrapper that is going to allow you to render the video that agora is sending us so i'm going to tell it okay where and where am i going to be placing that video surface i'm going to be adding you know on that game object i'm, I'm adding a raw image I am setting the local scale. I'm also getting the rec transform because there's a couple of changes that I want to make too. I change the size to be 60 by 50 because that's based on the UI implementation that I did. I'm also changing the local position and I'm also changing the local rotation. This is really important that you change the local rotation because the video is not going to be positioned correctly. So you always have to go negative 180 degrees to rotate it correctly. And then I'm just adding the video surface, which again, it's a component that Agora provides, which you can see that is available in their SDK. Okay, so now that we have these, does this work out of the box? Well, no, we need to still implement who is going to be calling into these methods, right? So that's what I'm going to be doing next. If we go into the Agora video setup, this is going to be basically the glue from my UI to Agora. So let me go ahead and implement this and then I'll show you how it works. <music> Well, this is everything that I needed to implement for the Agora video setup. So a couple of things, channel actions are going to be the actions that we're going to do if we're joining or leaving. I'm also have a reference to a button because I have that in the UI, a join channel button. I also have to specify the app ID, the channel name, the token. This is to determine if these settings have been currently set. If they're set, then we're good to go. If they're not set, we're not good to go. And then also reference to the channel button text and also the image because I'm changing the text and also the image color. This is important for Unity Android because we're going to have to request permissions for the microphone and also the camera. So that's why this array list is set up that way. And then on the awake method, I just get a reference to the channel button text. I also get a reference to the image. I set these by default to green. We can also just set it to white. I think that's what I did before and then i also add the permissions that i'm going to need to the array list and then i also set this object to don't destroy a lot so that we can keep it alive if we change different scenes and then on the start method i'm just validating making sure the parameters are set i'm also setting the callbacks for the onclick event if we wanted to basically if we wanted to click on join it's going to start agora as long as the you know the action currently is set to join and then if we, if we do it again, basically it's going to be a toggle. We're going to be leaving. And then the update method is just for debugging purposes. We can hit the S key to start Agora. We can hit the L key to, to basically leave Agora. This is going to be important for the next video because we're going to be getting the Agora user ID. And I'm just calling the instance local user ID. The start Agora is going to verify that we have the settings ready. Remember, I want to make sure that everything is being set, the app ID and the channel name. Check permission is going to be calling into the permissions API and it's going to determine. And this is something that is available on the Unity Engine Android namespace. It's going to check, okay, do I have that permission already? If I don't, I need to request it so that we can use, basically we can use the microphone and the camera if we're using the Oculus device, if we're using an Android phone and so on. So once you do that, we check for permissions. We're going to be loading the, the Agora engine by passing the app ID and the token. We're going to be joining the channel. And then I'm going to be just basically changing the state of our join channel bound to basically leave so that people can leave the session if they wanted to leave the session. Then on the other method, the leave Agora, also pretty simple. We're just going to call into leave. And I'm also changing the state of our channel button text. We also need to control the life cycle of the, basically the state of the Agora SDK. So if the application is paused, then I want to make sure that that is reflected on the video. Basically, we want to stop the video from rendering. 
and then if we go back and resume, we're going to be basically calling back into enable video and then basically enabling the video from actually rendering. And then on application quit, we're going to make sure we clean it up. We're going to be calling into onload engine. So now that we have that going, let's go ahead and jump into Unity and I'm going to be testing, but I'm going to have to disable the camera because otherwise I won't be able to show you. All right, guys, so I got the camera disabled now and I'm going to have to join a couple of things in here and associate. So if we go into the Agora video setup, which is basically just an empty GAN object with the Agora video setup script, I need to associate my channel button and that channel button is going to be, this is the one that we're going to be changing the state, whether it's going to be joining or whether it's going to be leaving the channel. And then I also have my videos uh, container here, which has a horizontal layout group, which I show you at the beginning of the video. So once you have that, we're going to have to specify the app ID, right? So I'm going to go back into Agora here and I'm going to go ahead and copy the app ID then go back into Unity, paste that. And then I also need the channel name. So for the channel name, we're going to do something like Dilmer XR and then go ahead and copy that generate temporary token and then it's going to go ahead and paste that here and then the token i'm also going to be pasting that here so we have the video rendering and if i get close here the remember the size that i set for the for the video in the make video surface if i go back into the agora container videos if you remember the id i set the videos and then here's the id the user id that we got from the from the callback and then I also created a raw image. So this is a raw image that we created. The size delta that we were setting in the code is 60 by 50. And then these are some of the parameters. Remember we did negative 180. And for some reason it changed a little bit. And I think it's because of the parent, how their size. But this is basically how that works. So let me go ahead and join this session from my other computer and show you that next video as well. Okay, so I got the other computer set up. I'm just gonna go ahead and join as well. And you can see that as soon as I join, there's two videos now rendering. The first one is my main computer, the one that we're just working on. And then this is basically my laptop currently looking up on me. And then you can also see that we can leave the channel. So I'm gonna go ahead and exit out on my other session. And you can see that as soon as I do that, we can see the callbacks on user join. This is when the user joined from my other computer and also a user offline got executed and then the game object got destroyed as well. So if I wanted to leave this as well, I could do that on my own computer and I can leave and you can see that now I don't have any sessions. If I wanted to rejoin, we can hit start. You can see how the video now reloads. So that's everything that I wanted to show you in this video. I'm also going to do a second video where we're going to be doing basically kind of like an overlay. And in that video, we're gonna be using the XR rig. And the XR rig is basically gonna toggle between these avatar and also if I were to remove the head there or also the avatar, it's gonna have kind of like a, like a basically a flat, you know, a flat face. And I'm gonna be putting the, the actual video stream right on the avatar face so that when we, if we wanna toggle it, let's say that we wanna display on the canvas, we can display it on the canvas, but if I wanna display it on each character, we can do that as well. So I'll see you guys on the next video.